The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. To uh, Detective Lieutenant Dundee, homicide detail, San Francisco Police from Samuel Spade, license number 17596. Uh, subject, the betrayal in Bumpus Hell. Fred Gillis was a raw boned poke from the border country. He was a stranger to Bumpus Hell, but he was no stranger to trouble. He jogged his pinto down the narrow main street, not liking what he saw, and reined up in front of the sheriff's office. He dismounted and slapped the trail dust off his Levi's. Then he hitched up his gun belt and ambled inside. He looked at the heavy-shouldered, uh, blue-jowled man behind the desk, and he didn't like what he saw. Neither did the sheriff, Rance Blaggett. State your business. Yeah, I can do it better than that. State your business and get out, he snarled. Red smiled thinly and drawled, uh, I'm looking for my brother. And uh, what be your name outside of Red? Here, I can do that better than that. And what be your name outside of Red? Red Gillis's hand slid toward one of his six-shooters as silently as the sun coming up over the butte. Gillis, he sneered. Red Gillis from the Tonto Rim. That's pretty good. The sheriff's muscles tightened like steel springs and pulled him erect. Ain't no Tonto Rimmer welcome hereabouts in Bumpus Hell, he cursed. That was real good. And then the slap of four hands on leather was followed by the simultaneous roar of four six guns. Hey, hey wait a minute. The sheriff. Hey, Rupp, I know her in there. Well, who is it? The sheriff is just. Mrs. Spade. Miss Kelton, next door. Right in the most exciting part. Mr. Spade, now she here. I won't take no for an answer. It wouldn't be neighborly. What is it, Mrs. Kelsey? Never you mind, come along. What are you up to here, anyway? Who, me? Oh, nothing. I'm just relaxing with an apple and a good book. I That's all. I don't see no apple, and the only reading matter I see is some western trash. Trash? Now, come on. There's trouble on the third floor. Well, there's trouble in Bumpus Hell. Don't just swear at me. I'm not... I know my duty, and I know your duty. Now, come on. Oh, it's okay. Let go my ear. <laughs> And that Dundee, so help me, is how it started. Effie had just read a book called How to Relax, and it said there that Western stories were relaxing, and that's how I happened to be at home at 10 p.m., writing herd on a copy of Sheriff and Outlaw, Rip-Roaring Adventures of the Old West. But bump as hell hath no fury like my neighbor, Mrs. Kelsey. I left Red Gillis and the sheriff face to face and vice versa, eyes flashing and guns ablaze, and followed her meekly up to the third floor. <laughs> You speak to them? Did I speak to them? You see this lot? No, here, under my transformation. Oh, well, why didn't you call a cop? Well, I wouldn't be neighborly. Get me the did. You see this lump? Yeah, yeah, you showed it to me. Put your wig back on. I'll see what I can do. And tell them about my lump. It's evident. Yeah, yeah, put it back. Hey, open up. I would not go back with you if you were the last man on the oh, ever Hey, hey, open up. Have it your own way. If I can't do without swear again, I'll tell you her up. No, I'm only being neighborly. Why did you beat up on kind, nice Mrs. Kelsey? That is a gross falsehood. I did not lay a hand on the old wag. It was that odious stinker, Joe Donegan, who was just left. And you can tell him, as from me, that I'm extremely unimpressed with his cheap threats to rub me out, and that I intend to continue on seeing Mr. Hobson or any other Johns which I care to. That's pretty good singing. Oh. Well, uh, you better tell him that yourself. I don't imagine I'll be seeing him. You won't. Hey, wait a minute. Who are you, anyway? Uh, just another tenant. I uh, live downstairs. Oh, well, now I recall whom you are. You are that Seamus, which lives on the second floor, really. Uh, Seamus, we call it in the radio. Seamus, would you care to come in and discuss a certain matter? Well, uh, thanks. Another time. i got to get back to Bumpus Hell. Oh, whoever she is, let her cool her heels for a few moments. No, you don't understand this Bumpus Hell. This is an urgent matter, which I would like to hash over right now and without further delay. Well, I... Uh... May I invite you in for a straight slug? Well, uh, okay, but just one, uh, in a glass. All right, make yourself comfy. <coughs> now, say when. Uh, just up to the lipstick mark. Here you are. <clears throat> well, now, to make a long story short, Mr. Spade, my name is Rosemary Fell, which remains my stage name, notwithstanding the circumstance that I am legally married to that barnacle which has just dusted this joint. Now, being as you are in the detective business... Now, wait I a minute. 
kindly permit me to finish, honey? Sorry, sweetheart. I'm not the type to jaw about my troubles just to pass the time of day. I'm sure you are. I am an actress. I knew that. And although I'm low in funds due to being between jobs right now, on account of that knothead making a scene in the last joint at which I worked... <coughs> Chief Ginger Ale. <coughs> just to show you how the brakes fall, Mr. Spade, Belita Wilkerson, who just happens to be about the biggest talent agent in this city, if you have the time, I'm phoned me, phoned me on the telephone, on the phone. and arranged an audition. Ah. She also advanced me the sum of 100 clams. 100? Which I will pay you to put the B on that dog, Joe Donigan, the rat. Now, which is he? Uh, what do you mean, put the B on him? Listen, Sam, that grifter has got a record as long as my arm. And what I have got on him is longer than his arm. Please. In short, I should like him thrown into the can so that I can feel safe to sing on him. Uh, look, uh, Rosemary, so you had a fight with Joe. You're sore. You want him to pay, you want to pay him off. Now, right. why don't you just wait until morning and uh, see how you feel? Sam, then? listen to me. That knuckle duster remains at large. I will be feeling no pain. Now, I, I know that from my flamboyant manner, you'd never guess it. But that is only the actress in me. In actuality, that flea intends to do me in. Oh, now, come, Rosemary. What? You disagree? Well, now, really, Rosemary. Why, a big pain in the neck. Rosemary. I am drinking my... Pour that back in the bottle. Don, put it back in the bottle. Uh, well, I'll be going now. Only trying to be neighborly. Well, back to bump as hell. Rance Blaggett, the smoking colt still gripped in his hairy fists, suddenly pitched forward like a fallen Joshua tree at Red Gillis' feet. Red leaned over with a thin smile playing at the corners of his mouth, not liking what he saw, and lifted the badge off of Blaggett's cowhide vest and pinned it on his own. Bumpus Hell had a new sheriff. Hmm? Uh, hey. Hey. Then I heard it. It sounded like a man sneaking up a fire escape. I went over to the window, raised it, and looked up. I didn't like what I saw. An overcoated figure reached the third floor landing and stood silhouetted against the lighted window of Rosemary's apartment. He was about the height and weight of that rat, Joe Donegan. By the time I'd rolled out the window onto the fire escape, his right hand had come out of his coat pocket. Donegan! Donegan, watch it! The floor ahead of me, and I didn't want to get too close to him until I passed that lighted window. He made the roof just as I crossed in front of it. The flashes from his revolver told me that. They also told me he had two slugs left to throw at me. The only light up there was a feeble glow from the skylight, dead center. I headed for the cover of a brick chimney just to the left of it. I had two things in mind. The skylight was his most logical avenue of escape, and I hoped I could tease him into emptying his gun at me. It didn't work. I stuck my head out. No shots. But he did use his gun. Oh. I should have stood in Bumpus Hell. The United States Armed Forces Radio Service is presenting the weekly adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Rat duty of the dog, uh, Sam. Sam, speak to me. Uh, Here, uh, come on. Uh, send an Indian to set his mill. Tell the governor the sheriff of Bumpus Hell is turning in his bag. Yes, and honey, you've got to pull yourself together now. Come on, come on, come on. These delirious Trumans will get us no place now. Come on, uh, Sam. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on, now. Come on. Now, do not rush things, whoa, honey. Whoa, that was whoa. quite a clip he gave you. Yeah, where were you? I was combing my hair out of the window. Yeah, and he was on the fire escape, not four feet away. Not a very good shot, is he? No, he isn't old. Sam, look at your poor little head. Here now, let me kiss it and make it well. Hmm, wild root. Yeah, see how it gets me ahead socially and on the job? Oh, uh, well now, what next, Sam? <sighs> Rosemary, I am going to the top now. My dander is up. Let's have a moment of silence while I put through a call to Lieutenant Thomas Dundee of Homicide. It took your boys less than an hour to locate Joe Donegan and haul him in, Lieutenant. Rosemary's charges were not enough to hold him on attempted murder, and all I could identify was the back of his neck. But you were good enough to bag him anyway so Rosemary and I could relax. I went downstairs to bed and started Chapter 4. Aha. Uh -huh. Red Gillis didn't trust Curly Mallard, the foreman of the Crooked S. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. 
Uh, uh, unique garage, Harry speaking. Uh, Sam, this is Dundee. Yeah, uh, Dundee. Uh, what time is it? Uh, uh, oh, uh, 8.30. Uh, in the morning? Uh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, uh, it's daylight. Say, about that, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Donegan? Uh, anyway, that fellow that we booked last night on your say-so. Uh, well, what about him? That was a bad beef, Sam. How come? Uh, you, you better tell me. Man was alibied, Sam. When did that happen? Well, a fellow named, uh, um, got it written down here, yeah, Hobson. Warner Hobson says Donegan was with him at the time. Who else says so? Uh, Hobson's words are good enough for the commissioner. Ran for assembly once. Did you know he also ran for Donegan's wife? You don't say. Well, that's a real puzzler, Sam. The human mind is unpredictable, Dundee. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I hope you figure it out, Sam. <laughs> While I was shaving, I fought and fought. I wondered what Red Gillis would have done if such a situation had cropped up in Bumpus' hell. A thin smile began to play around the corners of my mouth as I climbed the stairs to Rosemary's apartment. When I got there, I didn't like what I saw. It was a note pinned to the door. It said, Dear Sam, I have been called to do another audition. If anything crops up, you can reach me at Grace Stroom 34292. <laughs> The Belita Wilkerson Talent Agency. Hey, I want to speak to uh, Rosemary Fell. Hello? Yes, I'm still on the line. Who's calling, please? Uh, Sam a Spade. I'm sorry, Mr. Spade. Miss Fell can't come to the phone. Who's in charge there? This is Miss Wilkerson speaking. Yeah, well, uh, why can't she come to the phone? She's in the middle of her audition. Well... Is there any message? Uh, yeah, yeah. Tell her uh, Donegan's out and it's Hobson's choice. Yes? Mr. Hobson? Yes? My name is Spade. Oh, yes, Mr. Spade. Come in, come in, come in. Why did you phony up that alibi for Rosemary's husband, Mr. Hobson? Huh? Oh, because I knew he's not the man who fired those shots at her. Were you there? Yes, as a matter of fact, I was. Would you like to hear about it? I would. Well, first, I'd better tell you a little about myself. Now, for the past year, I've been interested in politics. <laughs> if I do say so yes, myself, Yes, yes, I... I know. You ran for assembly. Come to the point. Well, in a way, this is the point. My wife's a professional woman, and her own career keeps her busy a good deal of the time. Mm. Well, like the movie magazines say, a clash of careers and so on. Mm. That's how I happen to <clears throat> take up with Rosemary. I didn't know she was married. And, of course, when I found out, I dropped her like a hot, hot potato. potato, yeah. Potato. And then she started blackmailing me. Did you know about that? I still don't. Well, I think I can convince you. Go ahead. Well, I received a series of threatening phone calls from Rosemary. And I finally decided to go to Donegan and tell him the whole story. Oh, he was as mad as a wet head. Wet head? Well, he said he'd stop her. And I believed he was the right man to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, last night he phoned me. He said he'd had a little, uh, <laughs> little caucus meeting with her and assured me I'd had no more trouble. But no sooner had I hung up that phone when she called again, making another outrageous demand. I decided then and there to take things into my own hands. So happens I'm a crack shot. And I knew that I could come close enough to frighten her without actually hurting her. Yeah, you were laboring under a false impression. Huh? Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. Well, uh, you believe me now? Up to a point. Well, I'm afraid that's all I have for you, Mr. Spade. Well, uh, I have something for you. Oh, uh, uh, what's that? Look up here. You see this bruise in my head? Oh, well... All in the game, you know. Touche. <laughs> I'll hold it, hold it. I, I only... Lie uh, still. I'll get it. Uh, yeah? This is Rosemary again. Listen, now I want to talk... to me, you cheap ward healer. Uh, if you don't have that dough for me tonight, I will have no other recourse but to smear your fat puss all over the front page. Yeah, look, Rosemary... And I am just the individual to do that. You may think you are a wolf in sheep's clothing, but in my opinion, you are nothing but a worm. Yeah, well, look... Goodbye, you rat. And rat. Hey... Hey, Rosemary. Hello. Nuts. Oh, wait a minute, Spade. Well, what did she say? You're going to read it in my report, along with a bill for my services. Anita Wilson, talent agency. No, I'm so sorry she isn't in. You do that, sugar. Hello there. Likewise. Are you talented or just interested? I could be. 
Uh, in the meantime, is uh, Rosemary Fowl still here? Did she have an appointment today? Uh, yes, honey. I uh, called this morning. Uh, she oh, was well, here then. You must be mistaken, darling. No. The office didn't open till noon today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could I uh, talk to Miss Wilkerson? She hmm? isn't here just now. Oh, she she never gets in till one. Not until one. Huh? She's over at KQW cutting a transcription for our new show, Goal of the Girls and Gay. Oh, no. I mean, Gail of the Golden Gate. Uh, don't you mean Gail of the Golden Gate? <laughs> Gail of the Golden Gate. You said it, and I'm glad. Well, anyway, she and him. Oh. Good morning, Maggie. Any calls for me? Oh, yes, Miss Wilkerson. Your husband... Oh, well, Miss Wilkerson, I was telling the gentleman you weren't here. <laughs> Obviously, I am. Did you have an appointment? I uh, talked to you on the phone this morning. Spade. Oh, Rosemary's friend. Well, you might throw. Uh, she'll be out in a moment. Oh, what a distressing business that was last night. Rosemary tells me you saved her life. Well, uh, that's a slight exaggeration. In fact, the whole thing was a mistake. Oh, really? I understood that... Oh, here she is. Rosemary, here's your oh, friend. Sam, I'm ever glad to see you. Yeah. What's the matter? Plenty. Oh. Well, thanks loads, Miss Wilkerson. I hope the recording is better on this one. I'm sure it is, Rosemary. We'll call you when the client makes up his mind. Oh, well, thanks again. Come on, Sam. Goodbye, Mr. Spade. Goodbye. Sam, what is this new development that appears to be griping you? Uh, why didn't you tell me you were shaking Hobson down? Uh-huh. And who's been feeding you this pile of gross falsehoods? Look, Rosemary, you may be an actress, but with me, your audition is over and you did not get the part. And just what are your future intentions in regards to me? None whatsoever. I'm sorry I ever met you, and I'm going back to Bumpus Hell. <laughs> Went back to the office, swiveled my chair into a comfortable position, opened the February number of Sheriff and Outlaw to page 112, Betrayal in Bumpus Hell, Chapter 5, Stampede. It was disappointing. There was a lot of stuff about bawling cattle and dust clouds and Flo and Curly standing on top of a butte, not liking what they saw, when somebody yelled, Stampede. Red Gillis was riding ahead of the cattle and his horse stepped into a chuck hole and he'd sprained his ankle, red of the horse, it didn't say which. But Red was lying prostrate on the path of the avalanche of tossing horns, not liking what he saw. Uh, uh hold it a minute. Let's see. Uh, continue on page, uh, 113. Uh, uh, learn to be a private... Ah. Uh, hello. Spade, this is Hobson. Come out here right away. Something terrible has happened. Such as? Rosemary is here, and I... I think she's dead. <laughs> In here, Spade. Oh, I don't know how she got in. Oh, yes, I do remember I must have left the door unlocked. Where were you? Why, I, I uh, just stepped out to get some cigarettes. Did you prove it? Why, uh, no, I'm afraid not. I got halfway and found I didn't have any money and came back. You came back, walked through this room, went in the bedroom and didn't see the body until you started back? Well, yes, the lights were off. I, uh, I stumbled over it. This is the gun? Yes. She did it with my own gun. Oh, I never dreamed her love for me would drive her to self-destruction. Of course, now it's clear what really lay behind our poor, clumsy effort to blackmail me. It was a desperate move to get me back. Oh, I'll never forgive myself for driving that poor girl to this. Don't worry about that, Hobson. This isn't suicide. Murder? Oh, great heavens. What will Belita say? Belita? Yes, my wife. Belita Wilkerson? Yeah, professional name, you know. I was explaining to you before that... Oh, that's my wife now. What in the world will I tell her? Never mind, I'll get it. Hello? This is Rosemary, for the last time. Who? And I'm just calling to tell you that you have stalled around too long. I have talked to your wife and told her the whole sordid pitch. Why she wants you back, I will never know. But I sold you cheap, and you weren't worth a cent more. I am a girl who does not like to do things halfway, but you were just too late. Goodbye, you fathead. Yeah, Rosemary, I guess we were all too late. I called you, Dundee, and then, like the rat I am, made off with your prize suspect before you and your boys from Homicide arrived. We arrived at the Belita Wilkerson Talent Agency just as the boss was shutting up shop for the day. She had the recordings under her arm. All right, Belita, I'll take those. Well, what are you... Warner, Mr. Spade... Unlock the door, Belita. We're going back in. Warner, why are You'd you... You'd better do as he says, Belita. Well, all right, but... Give me those keys. I don't... Inside, both of you. Where do you play these records? The recording studio is just through there, but you can spare yourself the trouble. I admit I tricked Rosemary into recording those blackmail speeches and then played them back over the phone to Warner. If trying to hold on to my husband is a crime, then I'm a criminal. Oh, now, Belita, my dear. Come <gasps> oh, on, dear. stop that. we got to get busy. 
I phoned the Hobson house, and you were still there, Dundee. You said it was an open and shut case against Hobson, and deliver him at once or kiss my license goodbye. But when I told you my diabolic... <laughs> diabolically ingenious scheme, you said, yes, you'd be glad to, because it was a sure way of getting rid of me once and for all. It took us nearly two hours to get things ready in Belita's recording studio. We took the parts of Rosemary's so-called audition records that we thought would fit the occasion and dubbed them onto a single side. We played it back once, then I phoned you at headquarters. Homicide. Lieutenant Dundee. Spade, Dundee. Everything's ready here. Did you pick up Donegan? Oh, yeah. He's here. Donegan? Hold on. Okay, Belina. Start the record when I give you the nod. Yes, Mr. Spade. I didn't say it, Donegan. That's for you. Nice. Yeah, who's this? This is Rosemary. Huh? I forgive you for everything, oh. but there are some things I cannot it's forget. You Rosemary, love. it sounds like We you. have meant a lot to each other, but after what Ro you have done to me, it is time you stay through the nose. Rosemary, you I didn't mean it when I followed you to his house we and you went right in like you lived there. I just went nuts. What you have done to me, it is time you paid through the nose, you Listen. rat. I am a girl who Listen, does not like to do things halfway. Listen, honey, you're you not going to throw a book at me, are you? Honest, I'm, I'm glad to hear your too. voice. I thought you were we dead. Meant a lot okay, to me, kill though. it. Rosemary, are you listening? Rosemary! Hey, no, she's still on the line. I want to talk to her. Take him, Paul House. Wait a minute. Take him. Uh, Sam? Yeah, Dundee. Congratulations. That was a brilliant piece of work. Hey. Sam, you still on the line? Hey, I'll be all right, Dundee. I just fainted temporarily. Say it again, will you, pal? Yeah, as I was saying, congratulations on a brilliant piece of work. Well. But I have never in all my years on the force heard of such a wild, insane, illegal, unethical, and downright cruel method of extorting a completion. Thank you, Dundee. I feel better already. <laughs> Period. End of report. But, but, Sam, what happened? Effie, I thought I had made that abundantly clear. No. In order to discredit her husband's paramour, Belita gave her a come on about an audition and had her play the part of a blackmailer reading lines from a script which she, Belita, had prepared and thereupon proceeded to play said records over the telephone, well knowing that her husband would erroneously believe R Rosemary to be a blackmailer in fact and would drop her like a hot spud. No, Sam, no, I don't mean Don't that. interrupt. Oh. It was my inspiration, I, Sam Spade, to use... Belita's fiendish device for a higher purpose. No, Sam. No, yes. that is what I'm... No, Sam. I, I meant the Western story. Betrayal and Bumpus Crick. It is not Crick, Effie. You can't say H over the radio, Sam. Oh, yes, you can. Bumpus Hell is the post office designation of a hamlet right here in California. It is? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, well, anyway, what happened? Did Red Gillis ever find his brother? I didn't quite finish, Ev. Go type that up and I shall. <laughs> Sam, what's the matter? You don't look at all well. It can't be. It doesn't happen. It's a misprint. That's what it is. What, Sam? What? Maybe the writer was tired. Oh, Sam, it's only a story. That's what you think. Well, did Red Gillis find his brother? I won't tell. Oh, no, Sam. Now, don't be childish. Oh, well, all right. Remember the sheriff he shot on page one? What? Yeah, it turned out to be the new school mom. Oh, how ordinary. A woman, huh? <laughs> Night, Sam. Get off. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.